All right, uh, hi there, it's the man in the shack. I wanted to uh, take a look at the next piece of this, uh, 1985. Where the Chosen Joe's revamped version thing. Uh, <clears throat> as we're getting a little further along here, finding a few more of them that have, uh, eh, uh, not, uh, not problems. Uh, there's a big, uh, there's, there's one, there's one that really kind of went downhill. Uh, for a very specific reason. Um, you know, several of these, though, uh, I was able to uh, get to uh, the same standard that I had before. A couple of them I feel like are even better. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, pretty much par for the course so far, anyway. Uh, but uh, just to go through these, uh, starting out with Airtight, um, there's never been a really great torso for him, uh, but the idea is that we get, uh, that we get green... In the uh, we get green in the middle and we get yellow everywhere else and then we got a green helmet and uh, the getting the m correct mix of secondary and primary colors and stuff so that uh, everything is in the right color in the right area is um, a little uh, there's not that many options um, and so I end up going with this kind of the standard uh, thing but the but the idea is mostly that we get the green all over it then I was able to use torso stuff from uh, one of the, you know, from War of the Chosen stuff to get uh, pipes and stuff. They're, they're hoses uh, that are going around, which is very appropriate for Airtight. Um, and then, uh, as I had done in the previous version with him, I sort of cobbled together a helmet out of some different parts that just, you know, was able to put together something that looked enough like his uh, that, uh, you know, that it, that it passes. Uh, I like to be able to have a better shaped helmet than that. I'd like to be able to have something that, you know, that, that kind of sticks out on the sides and stuff. Uh, but for, you know, purposes of getting it on the page, uh, it's not too bad. So, um, there's airtight. And of course you want to give him poison bullets and whatnot. I, like, I, I would have... There's, there's some guys that are so specialized that, like, when I think about how I would load them out and what, you know, what to give them and you know, ultimately what powers to put on them when I can get to a point where everybody's got their own set. Uh, Airtight's the one and only Joe who would deal with poison stuff, right? There's poison in the game, but it doesn't really fit with anybody else. But with him it does, because that's, you know, that's his biohazard stuff. So Alpine is next, um, and uh, here's uh, here's another guy who's got uh, the, the vest going on uh, because they want to get him the... the this is brown, or he's got like some, he's got like a, a vest on, a heavy vest over green and brown, and then he's got the hat like that with the goggles. Uh, the glasses I put on him a long time ago, and I leave those glasses on him like like he's wearing real glasses. I don't know why, um, I just, it fits, and I've never taken them off, and I kind of like it, because, I don't know, it, it just... I don't know, makes him cooler, I guess? I don't know. A little, a little bit of personality or something? I don't know. For some reason, I just see him with glasses. Um, in the same way, like, short fuse, you know? Um, anyway, uh, let's see. Didn't have uh, too much of a problem finding this. And, uh, and, and, oh, yeah, I was able to put another one of those torso pieces on uh, to, uh, you know, to give him, like, this harness feel, right? Because the idea is that he's going to be, that is going to be his shtick, is that he's got ropes right away, and he can get, you know, he can climb up and down buildings and stuff. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, he's got a good uh, color balance, uh, good usage of these uh, three-quarter sleeves there. Um, they work really well with this, you know, with that. I don't have the problem with the shoulders that I do with other guys, you know, even in this, uh, uh, here coming up. Um, so barbecue, I'm feeling like he's not using any parts that are new. He's actually using parts that were classic parts, but I never kind of put him in this full thing. I, I decided to go, ho go go whole hog with the idea that his top is armored uh, because he's got. The, if you look at the figure and stuff, he's got this big, these big uh, shoulder things, right? And so I had to go with. So finding arms like this with the big shoulder things, he really kind of needs to have. Um, uh, he needs to have like some stuff 
like a big chest plate thing. And so I decided to finally go, uh, you know, kind of high tech with him. Um, this is the same helmet design that I had been using, and I think it works out really well. This uh, this this piece, this face plate here, makes it in the right shape essentially, um, and the rest of it looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm giving him one of these weird torsos with these, uh, you know, with the big lifter arm things on the back and hoses all over it, and that seems like okay. Well, he's got some stuff, and we can pretend like that's firefighting equipment or some shit. Uh, and the rest of it puts the orange in the right place. Um, I gave him a red gun because, you know, it's sort of like his fire extinguisher or something. I don't know, red, you know, he's, he's orange and that's that piece of red. It's just, it goes with the goes with the hoses. I don't know, makes him, uh, I, I think that's just a good uh, color scheme for him. Um, so uh, there's, uh, there's barbecue. Still nothing in the game that is fire suppression. As far as I know, I've not, still not found that as a concept. You'd, there's fire. You can set things on fire. It can damage things. So you'd think that there would be fire suppression. Hey, I put out this car that's you know that I'm standing behind that's about to blow up. Um, you know. So Bazooka, um, Alpine's partner. Um, I made. Him, he's one of the bigger guys. I put him up to 53. He's not quite as imposing as like Steeler or Gung Ho or, or Roadblock, uh, but he's on the larger side. Um, and uh, he would have a t-shirt sort of traditionally um, but uh, the t-shirts like the t-shirt that is in red doesn't look good with the rest of that I couldn't I couldn't work out the shirt to make it look good but there's these big blank ones that are uh, there's these big blank ones that are are like a big uh, it's it's as kind of as good as a t-shirt, right? Because the idea is that there's no decoration, essentially, right? Uh, of course, there, you know, if I could put a big 14 on there, I would. But, um, you know, the idea, though, here is that uh, the, the colors are right. And then he's got this sort of pot helmet uh, going on. And um, the twitchy attitude on him is funny. Um, I, you know... It's a, it's a. I wanted him to have to be very characterful, I guess. Uh, but um, the other attitudes, uh, you know, happy-go-lucky and stuff like that, doesn't uh, didn't quite work as well as this one. I think this one's funnier. Besides, Alpine is happy-go-lucky. Uh, so if you got Alpine happy-go-lucky and Bazooka twitchy, then you got, uh, then you start to have your, uh, your, your, your dynamic duo. Um, and then, uh, so that's Bazooka. So Crankcase, um, next is uh, one, again, uh, there's a lot of, uh, well, there's a lot of ways that I've approached Crankcase uh, in the time that I've been doing this. Um, mostly, uh, this helmet is great on him. You know, that feels right. Uh, and uh, I'm working around the short sleeves. Pants are no big deal. Uh, you know, as long as I get something like that's that, uh, you know, that's that color. Uh, and I gave him these ones that are kind of like, you know, oil stains around the bottom and stuff. Uh, so that's, you know, that's good for him being, you know, uh, being the mechanic and stuff. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah this, uh, those, you know, these arms, these short arms, uh, short sleeved arms uh, are... Um, they're continuously a problem. There's only a handful of different variations of them, um, and they, you know, they, they cause lots of different problems with the uh, with attaching to the torsos and stuff. They're supposed to be used in very specific situations, and I need to use them more broadly. I really wish more than anything that they were more short sleeved and three quarter sleeved arms, that uh, you know, that would mix and match a little better. But we do what we can for now. Um, so, um, I gave him uh, this kind of busy, you know, torso and whatnot. Uh, it, you, you, he needs to have an informal look. Um, this isn't exactly the most like his actual gear, um, but it does look informal and it gives him the short sleeves, which is the important part. Um, and uh, other than that, I think it looks pretty much like him. Uh, Dusty, um, you know, a pretty iconic and important character to get right. Uh, and this 
piece of gear here does all the work for that to make it feel like dusty. Uh, and um, the rest of it is, you know, getting the right camouflage, getting the right colors, and uh, and then just putting on, you know, uh, uh, you know, putting them in some gear. A little backpack's a nice touch. Uh, but basically, he just needs to have, you know, he's actually pretty easy. It's it, it was the the hard part was before this headgear came out. Uh, there was almost nothing that could make him look right, uh, and then this is, you know, this definitely does the job. Uh, if it was, you know, if that was all just behind, then it would be perfect, but, you know, what the hell. It's, uh, the, the fact that we get it this close is pretty darn good. Um, yeah, I feel uh, pretty happy about Dusty. Um, let's see, Flint uh, is one that's, that's always been a compromise, and here again, he's got the same He's using essentially the same combination as Spirit, um, with the same problem going on. Again, the, these same ones, the, the very ones that Crankcase was just using. Um, although, here it's really more obvious that they don't meet up with the shoulders. But, Flint had to have the open collar, and uh, I chose this particular torso in, uh, because uh, what I wanted to get out of this was, uh, as much as possible, this, the uh, the straps, the vertical, the two vertical straps, which is where he keeps all of his shotgun shells and stuff. So that's actually a pretty accurate torso for Flint. Um, if the arms would go out, and again, they should be actually three quarters, um, but there we go. Um, and uh, because, and so here again, um, here are these uh, extra sort of camouflaged uh, legs that are close enough to his camo, uh, that sort of, you know, that kind of dark camo, um, but they just retain their color. And so I was able to, uh, so what I do with him is I actually give him both his primary and his secondary color of the dark blue, because the only way I could actually get the beret the right color, uh, the same color as his shirt. Before, that beret was always the same color as his pants, but because I'm using these pants to take care of themselves, I can devote all of it to getting the rest of this right. So Flint actually is a good bit closer than he was before. Uh, it's just the perpetual problem with the arms. And it's hardly just him. So again, here's these very same arms. And he's using something more like what uh, what uh, Crankcase was using uh, for uh, Footloose here. Um, and uh, on this set, it's actually not too bad. I think this is actually the same configuration that Clutch has. Uh, you know, there's still, it's not perfect, uh, but it's better than those other ones. Um, and, uh, other than that, uh, Footloose, we can't get there. The really distinctive thing about Footloose would, of course, be the, the, his, his crown of stuff that he wears on his, uh, uh, on his, uh, helmet. And there's nothing like that. Um, so, you know, I just give him a helmet and then it's just, you know, get the camouflage, get the camouflage all over him, short sleeves. Happy-go-lucky attitude. That's Footloose. Always loved that guy. But, uh, but a pretty... You know... A pretty vanilla, easy model. You know, just one of the camo squad. Um, yeah. And I put some gear on him, too. So he's got, uh, you know... He's got extra stuff. Makes him feel busy. That was what that that was kind of how Footloose was. He just had a bunch of stuff on him. I was like that. Okay, Footloose, Frostbite, big improvement because of uh, uh, because of the uh, this thing, the fur. Um, I that you know he's the only guy I would use this on because uh, he's the only guy who would have that kind of thing. But. Um, yeah, uh, I definitely think this is an improvement over the previous design. Um, the uh, you know the arms and the legs are, are better. Um, makes him feel more this like this feels more like he's bundled up and stuff. Uh, but also he's inside the snowcat and this you know kind of harness thing around him and whatnot that goes. It's basically it's it's because that one of that that fur lining. 
and the only way to have that fur lining is to have the rest of this stuff. So I'm going with he's got high tech stuff on him because he's in the snowcat too. Uh, but other than that, it's a great looking model. Um, the uh, the 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 trick with frostbite and and, and it's getting it gets harder as it goes along is. It's got to be distinguished from the other because there's, you know, like eight different snow guys as you go along, right? And so, if you lined all of them up, they got to be dis they got to be true to themselves, but they got to be distinctive from each other. Uh, so it's really important that he not look like a snow job, essentially. Uh, and um, so far, that's I, I think a definite win. Uh, so there's a uh, first play. Uh, now heavy metal um, using the same trick as Cover Girl to get the leather jacket look. Here, here, here we're using it on a male uh, but he's the other leather jacket guy um, I you know I, I suppose I could go in that direction with Hawk uh, but um, I, as I've said dated many times I prefer the uh, the original uh, you know 1982 Hawk um, so uh, with uh, with him I'm using another set of uh, retains color legs uh, to get, uh, let's see. Uh, and what we're left coloring is the hat, which I've done my level best to make match this. Uh, but that's the right hat, essentially. I mean, it's like a tank commander hat. Uh, it's like an aviator cap type of thing with goggles on it. That's perfect. This looks like heavy metal. Uh, and then, yep, we got a jacket. Uh, and uh, colors are right in the right place. He's a pretty, uh, you know, he's not a very, uh, he's not a guy who did a lot, you know. I remember only a couple of books with him in it, uh, but, uh, you know, it was, uh, it's a cool design. He's, he's not like the others. Um, so, uh, Lady J, um, this one is a pretty important one to get right, and most of it is, was already done. I, they, like, her design has been locked for a long time. I like the haircut, I like the hat. Uh, she's more, uh, this is more, well, she's kind of like, she's kind of a hybrid between the way that the book looks and the way that the show looks. It's like the book color scheme, uh, and the hat is something that she wore in the book, not in the show. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the show was also like, she was using the spears all the time, and I put this back there to sort of simulate that's you know maybe she's got some spears back there whatever uh but seems like she would have that but ultimately it is trying to like the 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 the, the feel i'm going for is that she's wearing kind of a jumpsuit which she's not but it uh, but it gets her the uh, the open collar but it's all kind of one color and that's kind of how it was in the books it's darker than this she like but I can't get this much darker without it looking kind of not good. Uh, so this is kind of a good compromise. And it's interesting to get it to look the same across all the different pieces. I got two actually different colors of greens. This one and then a darker shade. Uh, but depending on, you know, it's because of how these individual pieces shade. Um, so what I was really trying to do is match up this sleeve, which is a secondary color, to this torso which is the primary color but I'm having to use two different things because they're inherently at different shading levels uh, so that's uh, you know that's kind of the interesting thing about her um, but other than that she's uh, you know she's pretty good I, I think this is in good shape um, okay so quick kick uh, this is a surprisingly terrific model um, of course there's no sash um, but uh, all the other parts of this it gets the color scheme. You get the red and the black, um, and the uh, and he's got the little uh, uh, you know Japanese karate headband. I don't know what they're called, um, but uh, yeah, I mean that pretty much looks like Quick Kick, uh, and uh, this uh, this this samurai class that somebody made allows him to you know have this sort of stance it allows him to use a sword as a primary so I can actually have him in the game behaving like he should um, you know if there was finally a sash on there I'd put it and you know, like give him some, you know with throwing stars and whatnot uh, ultimately his you know his his loadout should be 
like the sword and then throwing knives. That's silent weapons. That's like you can you know you can approximate that in the game and it works pretty well. Um, let's see. Oh, it's because of the, uh, that's interesting. There's, uh, like, certain combinations that you do that still, uh, that still limit, uh, what can actually work together. Shipwreck. Another, you know, lots of things I like about him. Um, you know, I've always loved the face and the, uh, the the intense attitude. I think works really well with him. I'm able to get the color scheme pretty much the way that I like it with the navy blue and the uh, and that lighter blue. Um, and of course, his tattoo is is the, the perfect shipwreck tattoo. Um, and uh, in the correct place, but. Uh, Again, with this, like Flint, like Spirit, like a bunch of other people, uh, we've got uh, we've got a compromised shoulder here. Um, and of course, he's never going to have a sailor hat. I mean, there, nobody's ever going to put a sailor hat as part of this game, as much as that would be cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, but we've got a decent uh, a decent shipwreck here. Uh, you know, ready to start the fight. Damn shoulders. Yeah, you tell them. Uh, and then finally, Tolbooth, uh, who unfortunately has altogether lost his construction hat, uh, which was, you know, which is a, a real shame because that's, uh, you know, that's a pretty iconic thing, obviously. Uh, so, uh, in, in, you know, the baseball cap does the job, uh, you know, not as well, uh, you know, I like this torso with this vest on it, makes him, it gives him a construction man feel, he feels like a construction guy, uh, and I made him big, I made him, I made him 52, uh, so he's, you know, he's bigger than the average dude, uh, and, um, you know, in the game, I always want him to be able, I want him to be like the demolition guy, you know, like, you want that wall down, he can do that. You know, that's that because that's sort of his thing. It was that it wasn't just that he would drive the bridge layer and stuff. It was that he's a battlefield engineer in the sense that he could like he could he could build bridges or tear down the you know barricades or you know he would change the shape of the battlefield. And I think there's really interesting opportunities inside the game for that sort of a thing too. Um, so you know you can do that with Tollbooth if you can uh, forget about his damn shoulders. So there we go. Uh, Running back, airtight, alpine, barbecue, bazooka, crankcase, dusty, flint, footloose, frostbite, heavy metal. Lady J, Quick Kick, Shipwreck, and Tolbooth. And there is your class of 1985. And uh, I'll move on to uh, the next one after. Like, you start to see that there's a couple at this point that are, uh, you know, a couple of uh, peripheral guys, admittedly. That are going to get uh, that are going to get start to get left out. For instance, keel hall. I don't have even close to the right things to make keel hall because uh, you need to have well, there's an admiral's hat that is distinctly you know distinctly missing, and another hat that is missing that is necessary for a guy to be correct is Sergeant Slaughter, who I would love to have in here, um, but there is I mean, without his hat, he's not correct. Uh, at some point, you know, that may happen. 
uh, there's, you know, there was a, a, the, when he was used in the book for a few issues only, um, he was pretty cool, you know, it, like, uh, it, but they just had the but design wise, they didn't really have him in like his wrestling route, you know, his wrestler's outfit. They had him just kind of in fatigues. Um, and I could get behind that as a, you know, as a sort of a clothing design. Um, but, um, yeah, so technically Sergeant Slaughter should be in this, as should Keel Hall, uh, but, uh, they're, you know, without some, without some, un, you know, without some change that I don't foresee happening, I'm afraid they're just going to be, uh, you know, set aside for at least, uh, at least for the time being. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I'll do another one of these when I've, uh, feel like I've got 1986 to my satisfaction. But that's, uh, that's it for now.